Yo guys, Sam here, and today I want to give you a preview of all the new features coming to your iPhone in iOS 16.2. You're getting Apple Music Sing, crazy improvements to your data and privacy, and so much more. So if you're excited, drop a like, does seriously help me out, and hit that subscribe so you stay up to date on news. All right, so first up, Apple has dropped a new app on iPhone and iPad called Freeform. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, it's because Apple announced it all the way back in WWDC in June, and it's essentially just a free Freeform Canvas is the name would imply. There's a lot you can do here from adding sticky notes, shapes of which there is a huge selection including objects, animals, nature. Like Apple's really thought out the complexity of this as well as text boxes or just general sketches. Maybe you just want to draw with your finger. Probably the most exciting update in 16.2 though is Apple Music Sing, which turns your iPhone into a karaoke device. You can see right there how it lit up that you could do something special. Now, if you go to the lyrics view in 16.2, you can actually adjust the volume of vocals. Now, obviously I can't play the audio or otherwise I would get copyright striked. But what it does is not only transform the lyrics into a karaoke style layout where it highlights the words as you're supposed to sing them, you can just remove the vocals entirely. So it's just the instrumental and you can sing sing along to your favorite tracks, just native now. Now it doesn't work across every song in Apple Music, but millions are supported, and most of the songs I've tried that are in my library have worked flawlessly. It's just really, really fun. You get to have a new experience with music, and Spotify doesn't even come close to touching this. Next up, let's talk about data and privacy on your iPhone. Obviously, this has been something important to Apple for a while, and they took a major step forward in iOS 16.2 by offering more services than ever before end-to-end -end increase in iCloud, well, if you choose to do so. The new feature is called Advanced Data Protection, and if you turn it on, things like photos, notes, iCloud backups will now be end-to-end -end encrypted, which means that not even Apple will have a key or a way to see this data if they try. And there's a few interesting things to note with this. Number one, only this stuff will be fully encrypted end-to-end. -end. Some other things like iCloud mail contacts and calendars will not because of the way they need to interoperate with other global systems. So that's why Apple didn't do that. The second thing is, well, wait, why isn't this on by default? And well, the answer is that a lot of people forget their passwords. So if you lose your iCloud password or you get locked out of your account, all of this data, everything on your iCloud account will be gone forever. There is actually no way to get it back if you forget your password. Now, Apple's found an interesting way to mitigate this by adding a recovery contact that could help you gain access back to your account if you forget. And you can even add something like a recovery key, which will be a certain passcode or a physical device that you have near your device to essentially authenticate things. So I don't wanna to get too into the weeds on this, but it's absolutely something I'm gonna be turning on for myself because it is the highest level of data protection Apple has ever offered. And it also means people like law enforcement, no matter how hard they try, could not get to that data. All right, moving on from that, one of the biggest complaints about the iPhone 14 Pro is that the always on display was too on. Like it still seemed like your screen was never off. So in iOS 16.2, Apple has added a new feature. If you head over to settings, display and brightness, and then right here for the always on display, you can disable two features. Number one, you can disable the wallpaper and number two, you can hide notifications. So now the always on display is just straight up OLED black and it looks pretty much like every other Android phone has forever. And while I will say it's definitely better, I'm still just not an always on display person. I've realized and I like my phone just off. I like looking at it on a table and it's not on. That's just so much nicer to me. I like my watch always on, but my phone, it just needs to be off sometimes. That's not the only new feature on the lock screen though. Apple added a couple of new widgets. First of all, for sleep, there's data and schedule or just the sleep option. Now, why you'd want this to be on your lock screen? Hey man, you do you. But the other one is actually more useful. If you go over to health, you can now track your medications and see reminders right there on the lock screen. Now that's actually useful. Next up for the dynamic island on iPhone 14 Pro models, Apple has re-added the ability to follow sports in here. For some reason, they uh, they took it out for a minute, so you can now follow them, and when this game happens, the sports scores will be reflected live in the Dynamic Island, which is obviously one of the coolest features. Next up in the Home app, there have been some major changes to your smart devices that should make things work better. Now that the Matter standard is supported, you can update your HomePods and other accessories in the Home app to make everything essentially be more responsive and reliable, which is a chain that's needed to happen for a while. So 
Thank you, Apple. The home app is so much better. All right, one last major change in 16.2 that has definitely got people heated is with AirDrop. So Apple has now removed the ability to receive content from everyone indefinitely. You know with AirDrop, there's the three options. You can completely turn it off, do only your contacts, or you could turn it on where anybody, anytime could AirDrop you something. Well, now after enabling this for 10 minutes, it will go back to contacts only, and you will have to re-enable it every time after 10 minutes you want to get content from other people that are not in your contacts, which is a weird change. Why out of the blue would Apple nerf the everyone feature to only work for 10 minutes before going back to a more restricted mode? Well, there's been some reporting that in China, protesters have been using the everyone feature in AirDrop to share information with a large group of people really quickly, and the Chinese government didn't like that. So all of a sudden, we're now getting this change globally, but in the last iOS update, this everyone for 10 minutes was China only. But now it's just magically expanded to all iOS iPhones around the world. I think in an effort to not look suspicious, it's disappointing. I don't agree with the change whatsoever, and I already missed the everyone option. It was just the most convenient, and I really liked it. All right, so those are the biggest changes in iOS 16.2 that you should know about. The update is not out yet at the time of recording this for everyone. It's still in public and private beta testing, but it should be out very shortly, sometime mid-December. So be patient. It's coming very soon, and you'll be able to do Apple Music Sing in no time. All right, thank you guys for watching. Love you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.